Hi everyone, I'm Deidre Brill and I'm here to talk to you about my chosen information community while I'm wearing my lovely pilot's headset here so you can hear me. Um, I'm going to be talking about the Shakespeare online community. In other words, people anywhere across the globe who go online to find out or share information and interpretations of Shakespeare. It's a really broad spanning weird group made up of people who are professionals, people who are novices, and people who actually study Shakespeare, whether they're high school students or professors, or people who perform Shakespeare, or people like myself who are just interested, just really like to read it and watch it. So I'm actually here at 7.30 a.m. on a Sunday. Um, why am I up this early? Two reasons. Uh, one, I have kids and they get up at the crack of dawn. Two, it's Shakespeare Sunday! Uh, Shakespeare Sunday is a weekly Twitter meetup of people like myself who just like Shakespeare. Um, and again, they kind of span a big range of where they are in the world uh, versus what kind of professions they have and how invested they are in Shakespeare, whether it's their livelihood or just an interest. Um, so I thought that today, given that the blog is questioning how our information tech, our information community uses technology to share information, I figured Shakespeare Sunday is the perfect place to start. So I've got Hedwig here to keep me caffeinated while I talk. Let's get to this. Shakespeare Sunday was created probably about five years ago um, by uh, just an online fan group. Uh, Hollow Crown was a production done in the UK of um, some of the Henry plays, Henry IV parts one and two, Henry V and also Richard II, and um, they just had a huge fan base and so they started doing Shakespeare Sunday as a, a way to just sort of pay homage to that. So Hollow Crown fans will still sort of loosely administer Shakespeare Sunday and they come up with a weekly theme which we can see right here and the theme this week is things with wings a lot of times they actually partner with different people um, in order to come up with who these themes are and it's usually actual institutions sometimes Shakespearean ones like Shakespeare's Globes or the Royal Shakespeare Company um, sometimes it's just fans who follow the hashtag but sometimes it's groups like uh, the National Ge Geographical um, Education National Geographic's um, education department and they've chosen things with wings so here we are and we're gonna go actually to the hashtag itself to see what kinds of content people have come up with so this one's pretty fun um, it's a quote from Henry V called I saw her, I am a hawk and this um, woman has paired a very funny gif with that uh, this is sort of a form of sense making actually um, which which I really love this is how people are able to better understand Shakespeare's words as they pair them with pop culture gifts um, and and sort of filter them through their own experience and we also have people who share information on the Shakespeare Sunday hashtag not just quotes which is sort of the main idea of the hashtag here we have a user who is actually going back over to National Geographic Education's um, site to their magazine in order to share information about birds. So it's kind of a cool bit of promo for them as well. And sometimes we have big Shakespearean users like uh, Ben Crystal. Ben Crystal is an actor and a writer. His father's a linguist and they both specialize in Shakespeare. They actually wrote a huge like Oxford Compendium Dictionary of Shakespeare terms. It's a book that a lot of actors use and a lot of Shakespeare academics use and they launched a website um, to go with it, Shakespeare's Words, which we can see right here. They recently retooled the website and so they've been uh, sort of promoting that on Shakespeare Sunday. Okay, so now that we've seen sort of what a uh, hashtag Shakespeare Sunday is, how do I how do I pick quotes? How does how does anyone pick a quote to share? Um, and well, the answer is librarian skills. Really, uh, I used to when I first started doing this maybe about three years ago. I used to be very old school, and I would actually pick up my massive Shakespeare tome, the Bible itself, and I would just flip through it um, and engage in what Marsha Bates calls browsing or visual scanning, just sort of <laughs> run along the lines, um, truly just to see what kinds of phrases popped out at me or to see, um, to kind of jog my own memory of specific plays. Since I got more involved in the group and since I'm a big nerd who runs her own Shakespeare blog, 
I started to use an app called Shakespeare Pro right here. And this is a really, really cool tool where it's just all of Shakespeare's works on an app on your phone. And it has this searchability um, to literally just look up any term that you want and it will show you where it pops up in Shakespeare's works. It's a really cool bit of cataloging. Um, so for this particular uh, time, if I wanted to look up something about things that fly, let's say I want to look up a synonym like the word soar, it just pops right up. Pretty cool. All right, I think I have tracked down the quote that I would like to use today. Um, so I'm just gonna show you a quick input of that. I love this one, by the way. And <clears throat> what I will do is just very literally type it in. So I'm looking specifically at my um, app. You will borrow Cupid's wings and soar with them above a common bound. All right, I'm gonna input that it's um, Romeo and Juliet in order for anyone to find it better. And I'm gonna indicate what act and scene it's from. Uh, we've got the Shakespeare Sunday hashtag and you gotta have some sort of visual with this in order for people to kind of see your interpretation. So I have a couple of options. I could, um, I'm a big lover of the Baz Luhrmann Romeo and Juliet film. I was a teenager when it came out, so it was kind of a big deal. So I could look for Mercutio and I find that specific, um, that specific interpretation of Mercur Mercutio from that movie. I could use him, or since Cupid is a thing here, I might use Cupid. And right here, we've got uh, Anna Kendrick from, I guess, one of the Pitch Perfect movies. And to me, this is kind of a funny pairing, so I'm gonna go with that tweet. Ta-da, my tweet was sent. 